at the White House, President Clinton announced U.S. aid to help feed children in schools around the world. Joining the president were former senators Bob Dole and George McGovern, who also serves as U.S. ambassador to United Nations food programs. The event is 25 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States, accompanied by Ambassador George McGovern and Senator Robert Dole. Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. First, I want to thank uh, Senator Dole and Senator McGovern for joining me and for their leadership. Uh, I thank uh, Senator Dorgan and Senator Leahy for being here, Representatives Hall and McGovern, Catherine Bertini, the Executive Director of the UN World Food Program, Jacques Youth, Director General of the UN Food and Agricultural Organizations, Finn Sandstrom, the Acting President of the World Bank, representatives of non-governmental organizations, and all those who have worked to make this global feeding initiative a reality. I also want to uh, especially thank uh, Secretary Summers, Jack Lew, and the White House staff who worked so hard on this in what in Washington time is a very short period of time to <laughs> put this all together. This morning we gather just three days after Christmas, the second day of Eid al-Fitr, a few hours before the last night of Hanukkah a time sacred to men and women of faith who share a belief in the dignity of every human being. A time to give thanks for the prosperity so many enjoy today, but also a time to remember that much of humanity still lives in astonishing poverty. Nearly half the human race struggles to survive on less than $2 a day. Nearly a billion live in chronic hunger. Half the children in the poorest countries are not in school. That is not right, necessary, or sustainable in the 21st century. The most critical building block any nation needs to reap the benefits of the global era is a healthy population with broad-based literacy. Each additional year spent in school increases wages by 10 to 20 percent in the developing world. Today, however, 120 million children get no schooling at all, 60 percent of them girls. So this year in Dakar, Senegal, 181 nations joined to set a goal of providing basic education to every child in every country by 2015. At the urging of the United States, the G8 nations later endorsed this goal at our summit in Okinawa. The experience is shown here at home and around the world that one of the best ways to get parents to send their children to school is a healthy meal. That's why today I'm very pleased that we are announcing the grant recipients who are going to help us put in place our $300 million pilot program to provide nutritious meal to school children in developing countries. The program will provide a free breakfast or a free lunch to some 9 million children in 38 developing nations. It will work closely with some 14 private volunteer organizations, many of whom are represented here, with the UN World Food Program and with recipient nations and farm groups so we don't disrupt local farm economies. The result will be increased school enrollment and attendance, especially among girls, and real improvement in these children's nutritional well-being and ability to learn. We know from experience that this approach works. In Cameroon, for example, efforts led by the World Food Program and USAID are feeding almost 50,000 school children, helping to increase school enrollment by over 50% and cutting the dropout rate for girls to virtually zero. We also know we can take that kind of success and extend it across Asia, Africa, the Balkans, and beyond, because a little funding goes a very long way indeed. Under this pilot program, for example, we will start providing nutritious food to more than 500,000 children in Vietnam. We will start providing high-protein bread and milk each day to some 60,000 students in 170 schools in Eritrea. And in Kenya, we will start giving some 1.4 million elementary school children a nutritious meal every single day. 
Of course, this initiative by itself is not a solution to the global hunger problem, but it's a down payment and a beginning. Now it's up to Congress, the United Nations, other developed countries, the NGOs represented here, and the next administration to continue this fight. We're going to need the World Bank to implement its pledge to increase lending for education by 50 percent. Developing countries need to make basic education a real priority. We need to mobilize private sector resources, something we've hard, worked hard to do by raising awareness of this issue among foundations. And in addition to the $300 million for school feeding, we have also fought hard for and won a new $37 million initiative called School Works to support basic education in developing countries and an overall 50% increase for all international basic education programs, including the fine education work being now done at USAID. Finally, we secured $45 million this year for the U.S. funding for the International Program to Eliminate Child Labor, a 15-fold increase since 1998. The fight for better education is only part of the battle we must wage to make the global economy work for everyone. Implementing late landmark trade agreements we reached with Africa and the Caribbean is a part of it. Leading the worldwide fight against infectious diseases like HIV and AIDS is important. Removing the crushing burden of death from impoverished nations that will in turn invest those savings in their people and their future is fundamental. We must also continue to offer more microcredit loans and close the digital divide. We've worked hard these last few years to put the battle against abject poverty higher on the world's agenda, and America must keep it there. This is not just about our moral obligation to help the needy, although it is great. It's also part of the answer to what kind of world we want our children to inhabit a generation from now. What do we want to avoid? The world is becoming more and more interdependent, and America needs strong and healthy partners. We need to invest in future markets, and we need to do it in every part of the world. We want to avoid a world that is hopelessly and violently divided between the rich and the poor, a future in which hundreds of millions of people decide that they have no stake in a peaceful and open global society because there's nothing in it for them and their children. If we can prevent that from happening, it will be good for our economy, for our security, and for our souls. We are greatly honored today to be joined by two leaders who clearly understand this. George McGovern and Bob Dole served their country in war and peace with uncommon courage, candor, and commitment to their principles. Springing from the soil of our nation's heartland, they have long believed that America has global responsibilities and must therefore have a global vision. Over 30 years ago, these two leaders strongly supported the creation of the domestic school lunch program. Last May, they both advanced the idea of an international school feeding program. Today, we're putting that into practice. The country will always be strong as long as we have leaders like them, leaders with their energy and vision, willing to reach across party lines to build a common future. Following their example, I am convinced we can put together the kind of bipartisan and international public-private coalition needed to build the global economy in a way that leaves no one behind and in the process creates a new century of unprecedented peace and prosperity. It's a great opportunity and a great responsibility. Now I'd like to ask Senator McGovern to say a few words. As President uh, Clinton has reminded us, this is the Christmas season, and for those of the uh, Jewish faith, it is the uh, time of Hanukkah. Those two uh, <clears throat> great religions, and indeed uh, all of the uh, great spiritual traditions around the world, admonish us to feed the hungry. What uh, President Clinton and Senator Dole and I are advocating uh, here today is that the United Nations should provide a nutritious lunch every day for every hungry school child in the world. The president has taken the international uh, lead in this uh, life-saving, 
uh, health giving education expanding initiative and we hope and expect that other countries will uh, shortly follow suit. Uh, here today is um, a brilliant uh, American, Catherine Bertini, the head of the uh, World Food Program uh, in Rome, who will play a key role in the administration of this program. That organization has 80 field offices of highly trained people in that many different countries in the uh, developing uh, world. She uh, will cooperate with the uh, wonderful uh, religious and philanthropic uh, private voluntary uh, organizations. Dr. Jacques Diouf, who is the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, is here in the uh, front row. Uh, he's solidly behind this program, and he has an even more difficult mission in the uh, FAO, and that is to lift uh, agricultural production and the quality of rural life all over the world so that people can feed themselves. Uh, the president uh, spoke about the uh, girls who are out of school, almost a hundred million school-age girls who don't go to school. They're condemned to lives of uh, illiteracy, to premature marriage at the age of 11, 10, 12 years uh, of age, uh, and they have an average of six children for each one of those illiterate young mothers as compared to uh, 2.9 uh, for girls who have the advantage of schooling. But a daily lunch of the kind that uh, we're proposing and that the president has begun here today will draw both girls and boys uh, into the schools and it will improve their health and their, their learning uh, capabilities. I hope we can eventually persuade the United Nations to uh, adopt a program similar to the American WIC uh, program, the supplemental feeding program for women, infants, and children. So, uh, Senator Leahy, I think that may be one of the best federal programs ever uh, put on the statute uh, books. Uh, Senator Dole, uh, Senator Humphrey, and I were instrumental in the passage of that legislation in the 1970s. If we can uh, establish a program like that worldwide for pregnant and nursing uh, young mothers and their infant children through the age of five, it could make an enormous difference in the uh, life of the world. The more we take care of young mothers during pregnancy and nursing, the fewer mentally retarded and crippled children we will have that cost ever so much more to care for. So those two wonderful programs, school lunches and WIC, uh, will in my judgment literally help to uh, redeem all God's children the uh, world around. And now I, I want to present my friend and my uh, partner in many battles Sometimes we've been on opposite sides, but uh, uh, as far as today is concerned, and in all those battles in the Senate, we stood uh, shoulder <clears throat> to shoulder. Bob Dole is not only a former senator, but a former uh, presidential uh, nominee, and when you have those two things, you have just about everything. <laughs> except the White House. <laughs> uh, but here we are, <clears throat> here we are, Bob, uh, in the White House uh, together, courtesy uh, of the uh, 1972 McGovern, Texas coordinator. <laughs> uh, so uh, I give you my friend uh, and uh, colleague Bob Dole. <laughs>
Well, you know, we had to select a committee on hunger in the United States Senate, and it, we had a great membership, um, myself and McGovern and Hollings and Kennedy and Humphrey all ran for president. <laughs> <laughs> so it's good for George and I to be here today to sort of visit this. I'd just be any of my first term, Mr. President, had I been elected. <laughs> But it's a great place, and this is a great event, and we want to thank you, Mr. President, and uh, all those who have an interest. And I see Tony Hall and Jim McGovern and Byron Dorgan and my good friend Pat Lay are up there. One thing McGovern and I don't have, we don't have a vote anymore. <laughs> so we can make speeches, but we can't uh, cast votes. But I want to make clear this is a bipartisan effort. We've had uh, Senator Luger has very, been very helpful. Uh, Congressman Joanne Emerson on the House, I understand from Jim or Tony, it's going to be very helpful, and, and it should be bipartisan. As Senator McGovern said in the, I think, uh, going back 15, 20 years, when all these hunger hearings started in America, many of us felt it was politically motivated until we went out and conducted and listened and traveled the country with Senator McGovern and others and learned that it was real, that there was a real need in the United States of America. And we've made a lot of progress since then, whether it's food stamps or WIC or school lunch or whatever the program may be. And they've been very successful for the most part, particularly the WIC program, I think, is the pride of everyone who had anything to do with it. But the others are certainly good programs, too. And all we're suggesting here is that we reach out to maybe 300 million children who don't have one good meal a day. And as the President's indicated and Senator McGovern has indicated, uh, most of these are young girls because boys are treated differently in many developing countries and they get the advantages. They go to school and the girls stay at home. And if you don't go to school, you don't get that one meal. And I would just say this has, in my view, and I'll give most of the credit to Senator McGovern where it belongs because he's been in the forefront of these issues for the past uh, 30 years. And I might also add that there's a, when George and I used to work together on these, people say, well, they're from South Dakota and Kansas, there must be something in this for farmers. Well, there is something in this for farmers. I've never understood, and I'm certain there are people in the audience who never understood, when we have this abundance in America, and we have more than we can ever eat, and more than we can store, and more than we can subsidize, and there's hunger and want around the world why we can't work out some program which might increase market prices, might decrease subsidies, but more importantly might feed millions and millions of people. And we do a lot of that now through public law, FOID and other global programs, but there's so much more that we can do. And it might have a positive effect on agriculture which is just another reason that I think this should have strong bipartisan support in the Congress and hopefully in the new administration and everybody who thinks about somebody, you know, somewhere in the world who may go to bed hungry, some child who can't fend for himself or herself. So it's going to be up to us and others around the world to make certain that we do our best to make this happen. So Mr. President, on behalf of uh, all of us who have an interest in these kind of issues over the years, they've been nonpartisan, they've been bipartisan, they've been, they've been meaningful, they've been helpful, and we certainly want to thank you. And I'd like to ask my colleagues to come up. Could they come up and stand sure. up here? These guys are the ones who are gonna vote. I want to get them up here. <laughs> Let me make two brief comments. First of all, on the way in here, uh, the young man who was advancing this event pulled out a copy of a picture of me 
escorting Senator McGovern across an airport tarmac in 1972. And uh, Senator Dole saw it, and he knew immediately that if he'd had that picture in 1996, the outcome of the entire election would have been changed. <laughs> my hair was uh, rather long, and my sideburns looked like a uh, burn side. I looked like one of those Civil War generals. It, it was, <laughs> but we were able to cover it up, thank goodness. <laughs> Now, uh, let me make, a, uh, let me make a, a, a serious point, if I might. Um, first of all, I, I feel very indebted to all the, the people who are here. Uh, Senator Leahy and Senator Dorgan have long been advocates of fighting hunger. Uh, Congressman McGovern uh, came to me with Senator McGovern, no relation, I might add, uh, with this and, uh, and warded me to death on it. And... Uh, my good friend Tony Hall has been the foremost advocate of dealing with the problems of the poor and the hungry in the world in, in Congress, and uh, all of us acknowledge that. Um, but I, I want to, let me just sort of say one thing we did not explicitly say that I think we should say before we leave. I was talking to Senator McGovern about it. What we would like, as Senator McGovern and Senator Dole said, is to prove through this pilot program that A, we can make this work, and B, we can do it without disrupting local farm economies. If we can do that, then the goal is to provide this sort of meal at breakfast or lunch, depending on which works better in each country, to every child in the world that needs it. And I think Senator Dole said that we reckon about 300 million. Uh, the estimate is it would cost between six and seven billion dollars to do that. So if we were to go that route and the United States were to pay its fair share, it would be about a billion and a half dollars, uh, give or take, uh, over the next few years, a year. But if you think about that, if you think about being able to give a meal to 300 million kids a year, every single day of the year, for an aggregate international cost of somewhere between six and seven billion dollars a year, and you think about all the hundreds of billions, indeed the trillions of dollars that are spent by governments around the world. I mean, it's just walking around money. I mean, it's, 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 it's such a tiny amount of money compared to the aggregate expenditures of the governments of the world on everything else they spend money on. That, uh, you know, I, I wanted this to do this. We've worked very hard this year to get this off. I'm not trying to saddle the future administration or future Congress with an unbelievable burden. This is a, a relatively small new commitment that I think the United States should embrace in cooperation with its uh, allies and friends and others around the world, and one that I hope and pray will be embraced, and it can be funded in any number of creative ways, but uh, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I believe 10 years from now this will have been done, and I believe when that happens we will be profoundly indebted to these people who have come here today to advance this idea. Thank you very much. Tells us to jump. You know, how quickly we get out there. Larry, thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, George. Uh, nice to be with you. Uh, yeah. This is uh, Tony. Thank you very much. Put my tie on for this one. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Sunday on C-SPAN's Book Notes, author Peter Hitchens discusses how American culture has influenced the United States.